Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we talked about enzyme kinetics, the competitive inhibitors, non-competitive inhibitors, uncompetitive inhibitors, as well as mixed inhibition. We also talked about cooperativity and the Hill's coefficient. Today, let's talk about more protein functions. Today you will learn about actin, myosin, collagen, elastin, kinesin, and dynein, opposite directions as you can tell, and cell adhesion molecules, which include cadherin, integrin, and selectin. Please watch the videos in this biochemistry playlist in order. To get the most out of this video, please watch these four videos on my channel before this one. Atrophy versus hypertrophy. What is atrophy? Well, the organ is shrinking. The cell is decreasing in size. The opposite of atrophy is hypertrophy or hypertrophy. What does trophy mean? It means growth, tropic, tropo. Tropo is not the same as topo. Topo means space, but tropo means to grow. Atrophy, no growth. Hypertrophy, tons of growth. I mean increase the size of the cell. Not to be confused with hyperplasia, which is increased number of cells. Look at this shredded dude right here compared to me. And as a lady once said to me, medicosis, you have the arms of a thinking man. I don't know whether to be happy or upset. Do you think Joe Rogan has more muscles than me? Do you think Joe Rogan has more muscle fibers than me? The answer to both questions is in the negative. No, if you're shredded, you're not increasing the number of skeletal muscles because you have about 620 skeletal muscles. They are not increasing just by exercising. And you're not increasing the numbers of muscle fibers either. What you are increasing is the size of each fiber, not the number, the size. So should I call this hyperplasia? No, you should call this hypertrophy. Exactly. Thicker muscle fibers more myofibrils, which are actin and myosin, more ATP for energy, more creatinine phosphate, which is a source of energy, especially when you begin exercising, and more glycogen, which is the storage form of carbohydrates in humans, especially muscles. Okay, medicosis, so you said hypertrophy of muscle fibers. Can you tell me more? Well, it's hypertrophy of the sarcoplasmic reticulum and hypertrophy of actin and myosin. To learn more about these proteins, watch my videos on muscle contraction. The opposite is called atrophy. What happens to your muscle if we cut the nerve? Well, your muscles will get weaker because there is no stimulation. Paralysis, flaccidity, hypotonia, hyporeflexia, atrophy, fasciculations, and fibrillations. The former is macroscopic, the latter is microscopic. And this specific type of muscle atrophy is known as disuse atrophy, which is a localized pathological atrophy. Because not every atrophy is pathologic. Now let's dig deeper into today's topic. We will discuss many types of proteins, structural proteins and functional proteins. What kind of function? It could be motor function, it could be binding function, it could be cell adhesion function, or it could be immunological function. Let's go. Quick review on the cytoskeleton. Your body as a whole has a skeleton, of course you know that, and your cell has a cytoskeleton. Cyto means cell, and skeleton is the skeleton. Let's say we want to transfer a molecule from here to here. Well, it's gonna jump onto the tram track, and the tram track will transport it from this place to this place. And this is part of a cytoskeleton. Moreover, the cytoskeleton, think of it as a chassis, a scaffold, is protecting the cell by giving it structural integrity so that your cell does not crumble like a tissue paper. The most abundant thing in your body is water. The second most abundant is proteins. Proteins are everywhere for structure and for function. Remember when we talked about the enzymes? Yeah, these are functional proteins. How about the microtubules? Most of the time they are structural. So your cytoskeleton is made of gazillion things, including proteins. Structural proteins, that is. Cytoskeleton is a set of fibrillar protein networks organized into tubules and filaments. Since they are microscopic, we call them microtubules and microfilaments. 
and again the tram track for organelles to move inside your cell. As a human, you have three types of cytoskeleton, microfilaments made of actin, microtubules made of tubulin, and intermediate filaments made of different proteins depending on which tissue you're talking about. As for the intermediate filaments, again, it depends on the tissue type. If you're talking about mesenchymal cells, it's vimentin. Your epithelial cells have an intermediate filament known as keratin. Oh, it's present in my skin, hair, nail, etc. Exactly. Neural cells have neurofilaments. How about the neuroglial cells? They have glial fibrillary acid protein. Dead gummit. Why should I care? Because brain tumors could be a tumor made of neurons, or a tumor made of neuroglial cells. One way to tell the difference is to look for the intermediate filaments. If you have increased expression of neurofilaments, odds are it's a neuroma. But if it's increased GFAP, glial fibrillary acid protein, then it is a glioma. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Neuroma versus glioma. Carcinoma versus sarcoma. See? So we have structural proteins, motor proteins, binding proteins, cell adhesion molecules, and immunoglobulins. The structural proteins are collagen, elastin, keratin, actin, and tubulin. Microfilaments, microtubules. Next, we have motor proteins, including myosin. So actin is here, myosin is here. Both are important to contract your muscles. Actin will slide over myosin and boom, you will shorten your muscle fiber and contract the muscle. And then move it forwards, kinetic, kinesin or kinesin. However, move it backwards, the degenerate is dynein. Binding proteins include hemoglobin, calcium binding protein such as calbindin, DNA binding proteins such as transcription factors, cell adhesion molecules, cadherin, which is a calcium, adhering protein, integrin, which is an integral protein. What do you mean by integral? An integral protein is a protein that takes the entire thickness of the cell membrane. And selectin for a selective activity. And don't forget the famous gamma globulin, which are immunoglobulin. Recall that your plasma proteins are either albumin or globulin. The globulins are either alpha globulin, beta globulin, and gamma globulin. The gamma globulins in your body are the immunoglobulins, and they include immunoglobulin A, immunoglobulin E, M, G, D, etc. Like in the boy's name, Majid. Let's dig deeper. Structural proteins, they provide a framework, a scaffold, a chassis so that your cell becomes stable. It's part of the skeleton of the cell, i.e. cytoskeleton. And we have two types of structural proteins, primary, such as these, and secondary, known as motifs. The motif is usually made of a primary structural protein plus something else. Let's talk about the primary structural proteins, collagen, elastin, keratin, actin, and tubulin. Collagen is the famous triple helix or trihelix, unlike your DNA, which is double helix. Your collagen is primarily, the primary structure, left-handed. And then I take that and I will wind it in the opposite direction, wrap it to the right, now it's right-handed. Collagen is present in bones, cartilages, vessels, etc. Elastin is very elastic. You find it all over the connective tissue, especially elastic cartilage, as well as many parts of the extracellular matrix. Keratin is very strong. Keratinocytes will make it, and you find it in hair, nail, skin, etc. Actin is for muscle contractions. Actin filaments are the microfilaments. The actin filament usually has a positive end and a negative end, allowing the molecules to go only in one direction, not the opposite. As for tubulins, these are your microtubules. We have alpha tubulins, beta tubulins, etc. Microtubules are very important in cell division. If you remember my mitotic spindle, to separate the chromosomes into cell number one and cell number two. Moreover, tubulin, in addition to kinesine and dynein, is important for cell transport. Now you need to know the directions. Look, the nucleus with the N is negative with the N. However, the periphery or the plasma membrane of the cell is positive. Let's look at here again. The nucleus is negative. The periphery, the plasma membrane is positive. Okay, got you. 
But why is that metacosis? Because the same microtubule has its positive pole towards the periphery, but the negative pole towards the nucleus. Next, motor proteins. These are proteins that make up your cilia, flagella. And of course, to move the cilia and flagella, they need energy. Where do I get that from? From ATP. How do I get the energy out of the ATP? By ATPase, which converts the ATP into ADP and uh, inorganic phosphate. This includes myosin, I know that, but it's not just for muscle contraction, it can also help you with cellular transport. The complete story of kinesines and dynein will be discussed shortly. As for binding proteins, you have the hemoglobin, we talked about this before in my video on protein cooperativity and the Hills coefficient. Recall that hemoglobin is in your red blood cell, and your hemoglobin is made of heme and globin, do not confuse globin with globulin, please. They are not the same. Hemoglobin enables your red blood cell to carry oxygen and carbon dioxide. Hashtag oxyhemoglobin and carbaminohemoglobin, respectively. Calcium binding proteins, look at that. Calcium, cal binding, bind protein. I-N, cal binding. Usually when the word ends in I-N, it's protein. There are exceptions, of course, like heparin. Heparin ends in IN, but it's not a protein. Now everything should make sense. Look at that. Elastin. It's an elastic protein. The protein made by keratinocyte. The protein that acts. Action. Contraction. And the protein in the tubules. The microtubules have tubulin. The protein in your muscle. Myo means muscle. Kinetic forwards. Dynin backwards. Hemoglobin because it's made of heme and globin. Cal binding because it's a protein that binds calcium. Next, cell adhesion molecules, which are integral membrane proteins, which traverse the cell membrane, taking the whole thickness of your cell membrane. They include cadherin, which is a protein that adheres to calcium. Calcium adhering protein. The integral protein is integrin, and the protein that plays selective function is selectin. Aminoglobulins again, they are proteins that are globular in structure and serve immune functions. Let's talk more about collagen, which is a structural protein. We have many types of collagen, including type 1 collagen is in bone. Type 2 is in cartilage. Type 3 is very flexible. Look at that, blood vessels. Type 4, under the floor, I mean the basement membrane. Type 5 is for hair and placenta. Here is how you make collagen. Recall, it started as pre-pro-collagen and then pro-collagen, and then you hydroxylate the proline and lysine residues. Before you know it, you have the famous triple helix or trihelix of collagen. Hydroxylation meaning add OH, a hydroxyl group to the collagen. By the way, hydroxylase enzyme requires vitamin C as a cofactor. That's why if I have scurvy, which is vitamin C deficiency, my hydroxylase is toast and hydroxylation is history, which will lead to defective collagen fibers. Collagen plays a role in my blood vessels and basement membrane. That's why patients with scurvy will bleed because their blood vessels are weak. And then before you know it, it's outside of the cell, pro-collagen, tropocollagen, collagen fibrils and collagen fibers. Proline and lysine. If you hydroxylate them, you end up with hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine, which are very important to make the triple helix of collagen. If you want your blood vessels to be strong, make sure your vitamin C is okay. Iron, oxygen, all of these are needed to make good collagen. But if you do not have vitamin C, you develop scurvy and you get those bleeding spots or petechiae, bleeding from gums, etc. You can even get retroorbital bleeding and intracranial bleeding. Scurvy is notorious for causing curly hair. So if your hair used to be okay and then it started curling, this could be a sign of scurvy. Something that most doctors do not know because most doctors are doofuses. Now let's talk more about kinesin and dynein. Kinesin, keep it positive, but dynein is a degenerate it will make you degenerate towards the negative. Now, where was the positive? The positive is in the periphery, on the plasma membrane. 
Where is the negative? The negative is in the nucleus. Kinin, keep it positive. So from negative to positive. Dining, degenerate towards the negative. Okay, beautiful. Now let's apply the same concept for your neuron. Where is the nucleus? The nucleus is in the cell body. And the nucleus has to be negative. But hey, medicosis, why is the nucleus always negative? Because recall that your DNA, which is in the nucleus, had phosphate group, and phosphate is negative. It makes sense. So the same concept applies. The nucleus is here, the nucleus is negative. Where is the positive? It's at the periphery. Okay, so kinesine, keep it positive, but dynein will degenerate towards the negative. So now I gave you two mnemonics. Kinesine, keep it positive, dynein, degenerate to the negative. But please, for your sake, do not memorize two mnemonics. Just memorize one, and then the other one is the other one. If you try to memorize both mnemonics, odds are you will mix them up on the exam. So personally, I just memorize one. Kinesin, keep it to the positive. After this, binding proteins, you know, it's hemoglobin, calcium binding proteins, such as calbindin, and DNA binding proteins, such as transcription factors. Then we have cell adhesion molecules, cadherin, which is calcium-dependent cell adhesion protein, and we have two types, A cadherin is in the epithelium, and N cadherin in the neurons. Before we do that, remember what's an integral protein? An integral protein is a protein that takes the entire thickness such as a channel, a carrier, or a pump. Look at that, taking the entire thickness of the cell membrane. That's an integral protein, and we have two functions for those integral proteins. Could be a channel or a carrier. The channel could be gated or non-gated. The gated could be ligand-gated or voltage-gated. The ligand-gated could be internally or externally, depending on where the ligand is. If the ligand is coming from the outside, it's external. If the ligand is coming from inside the cell, it is internal. We'll talk about those gates in the next video. Let's talk about cadherin. Cadherin is a calcium-dependent adherin, adhesion protein. It's in an integral membrane protein, i.e. it takes the entire thickness. E cadherin is in the epithelium and cadherin is in the neuron. Why should I care? Because cancers. Cancers are notorious for destroying your E cadherin. E cadherin, may he rest in peace, was responsible for the integrity of your epithelium. Without it, there is no adhesion between your cells, and the cancer cell will be able to plow through your normal cells. Hashtag metastasis. Moreover, many cancers have collagenase, and collagenase will break down the collagen. Type 4 collagen was in the basement membrane, so collagenase is another weapon by which the cancer metastasizes, which means invades and spreads to surrounding tissues or to the entire body. Recall that cancers have predilection, i.e. preference. Carcinomas love to go to the lymph. Sarcomas love to go to the blood. Now let's talk about integrin and the story of your platelets, as well as selectin and the story of your neutrophils. Neutrophils will adhere to your endothelium. Platelets will adhere to your subendothelial collagen just under your endothelium. Neutrophils versus platelets, why the difference? Well, form follows function. What are we trying to achieve? Well, if I am a neutrophil, I am trying to adhere to your endothelium so that I can escape the entire vessel and go to the outside because the bacteria is here. And as a neutrophil, I want to kill that bacteria. However, if you're a platelet, what are you trying to achieve? Well, you had a cut. You cut the vessel. The endothelium is toast. The only thing that is available is the subendothelial collagen because it has been exposed as the endothelium was broken into. So as a platelet, I want to adhere to your subendothelial collagen and then call my friends, other platelets, to come here and then call the coagulation factors to make a clot to stop the bleeding from your injured vessels. So I do not want to leave your vessel. I want to stay on the wall of the vessel. So the neutrophil wants to adhere to the endothelium and then escape. The platelet wants to adhere to the subendothelial collagen and then remain here. Both of them wants to adhere. That's why we're talking about cell adhesion molecules. 
What's the name of the glue? Vibul Palladi Bodies. And the glue needs Von Willebrand Factor. Von Willebrand Factor came from the Vibul Palladi Bodies of the endothelium and came from the alpha granules of the platelets. Okay, if it's neutrophil time, the neutrophil wants to escape. Oh, escape, that's why I should dilate the vessels to make it easier for the neutrophils to escape and fight the bacteria in the extracellular matrix. Conversely, after you injure yourself, do you want to dilate? Oh, heck no! I want to constrict to minimize blood loss. So in cases of acute inflammation, we start by vasodilation. That's why when you're inflamed, you get redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. But if you want to clot, you better vasoconstrict to minimize the blood loss. How did the platelets adhere to the subendothelial collagen von Willebrand factor from your subendothelial collagen interacted with glycoprotein 1b on your platelet and boom, they will hug each other. Moreover, the platelet will also hug other platelets. How did the first platelet tell her friends to come here? By whistling. Whistling what? ADP and thromboxane A2. These two will tell other platelets to come. Once the other platelets come, you'll find a receptor ready. A receptor on this platelet and a receptor on this platelet and then they hug and kiss each other. Who's that receptor? GP2B3A. GP2B3A is a glycoprotein. This is an identifier for the protein. You can write it like this. You can write it Roman numerals. Or you can say this GP2B3A is nothing but integrin alpha 3B beta 3. Oh, so the GP2B3A is an integral. I hope by now it is clear that this is one of the cell adhesion molecules between the first platelet and the second platelet. Now let's talk about selectin and the adhesion of the neutrophil to your endothelium. Look at that, here is selectin on your endothelium, which will interact with Sialyl-Lewy bodies on your neutrophils. They will hug and kiss each other, and then the neutrophil will leave the blood and go to the outside to kick that bacterium in the nuts. Next, aminoglobulins, which are gamma globulins. Remember that your blood is made of plasma and cells. The cells are red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The plasma is water and proteins. The proteins are albumin and globulin. So globulins are plasma proteins. And we have many types, alpha globulins, beta globulins, gamma globulins. Your antibodies, your immunoglobulins are gamma globulins. Who made those gamma globulins? Well, your B lymphocyte. Your B lymphocyte matured and became a plasma cell. The plasma cell will make all kinds of antibodies or immunoglobulins or gamma globulins. And they are IgG, IgM, IgA, IgD, IgE. IgM is for the primary response. IgG is for the secondary response. IgM will fix and activate the complement. IgG is important for opsonization, which is to make your bacteria tasty, yum, 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 so that your immune cells will enjoy themselves while eating and destroying your bacteria. IgA is the only antibody that decided to leave your blood and ascend to the mucosal surfaces, such as the mucosa in your nose, for example. IgE is ew, allergies, anaphylaxis, ew, parasites, double ew. Here is your antibody or immunoglobulin or gamma globulin. The dark blue are two heavy chains. The light blue are two light chains. This is the variable region, but this is the constant region. Variable will take a V and constant will take a C. The antigen, which is a piece of the bacteria, will bind here. So this is called the antigen binding site near the variable part. As for the cell, it will bind to the constant part. So look at that. The antigen will bind here. Epitope is very similar to antigen. So it's also binding here. Where is the macrophage? Well, it's a cell. So it's going to bind here. How about the complement? It's a protein, not a cell. It's going to bind here. I have many immunology videos on my channel and I have a specific video for complement. We talked about the classical complement cascade, the alternative pathway, and the lectin mannose pathway. 
And there you have it, the different types of proteins in your body. Pause and review. If you want to be an excellent student, bring a piece of paper and write everything down from memory without looking. If you like this video, you will enjoy my emergency medicine high yields course, which will teach you about acute respiratory distress syndrome, many cardiac arrhythmias, myocardial infarction, strokes, and much more. Download it today at medicosisperfectionatus.com. I also have a general pharmacology course if you want to learn about pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, all of these graphs and their math equations. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense.